Okay, there we go, everybody. I finally have the good one set up. Sorry, they released one of these a year, and there wasn't a different title for any of them. So it made it pretty difficult to tell which one was, like, the good one and which one was the bad one. Because some of them were really bad, and some of them were really good. So this, this one had some of my favorite decks of all time. I actually went on and um, replayed some of these. Uh, I built one of these decks IRL. It was, I think, the last deck I ever actually built. And I'm going to show you that now. So yeah, so I started playing Magic back in uh, grade school. I think I started playing it back in like grade four or five. It's always been, uh, I think, my favorite card game. I liked it a lot more than Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, just because Yu-Gi-Oh! was super cool, to be perfectly honest. So this is the Age of Death. So we'll soon see what the point of this game is. It's kind of funny because basically nothing happens with this deck for a bunch of turns and then suddenly you just win. It's kind of a insane draw mana excel deck. Yeah. So I'm just chilling out if people want to ask me questions on track in the chat. Is it too loud or too quiet? Oh, in-game way too loud. Okay, let's just fix that. Uh, is that better? I just turned off the game volume. I can't really hear how OBS um, balances, so that should hopefully fix it. So in the chat, Oscar Feinstein says, I love magic, but the game is somewhat expensive. Yeah, because you had back in the day, you had stuff like Tarmogoyf. And um, Tarmogoyf was generally regarded as being the best creature card ever uh, printed in a magic game it was two mana and it was tarmogoyf gets plus one plus one uh for each type of card in your graveyard that is land sorcery instant enchantment etc so you could have like a turn two five five if you knew what you were doing so tarmogoyf just kind of dominated the entire meta game and that was just kind of uh yeah, they had to burn the go. They had to get rid of the goif because it was destroying magic. So let's see here. So we have mass polymorph. We have mold shambler. I'm gonna play new frontiers with the kick. So that means I get to search my deck, and he gets to search his deck for five lands. Now, as you may have noticed with this deck, basically how it works is. You just massively mana accelerate and then you play Eldrazi. Rise of the Eldrazi was the last deck, uh, last uh, expansion I played. After that, they came out with, I think it was New Phyrexia, and it just became completely about money after that point. See, what it used to be was there was just um, commons, uncommons, and rares. But they added in Mythic Rares, which more or less made it so the game was entirely based on money. And they just added a bunch of other stuff in like that. What is your favorite color combo, RG? Um, my, the deck I played, which I actually won a tournament with, was a mono-black control deck. And that was pretty much all I would play, was mono-black control. I would use Magus of the Coffers and like a bunch of other stuff like that to just mana ramp like crazy. And yeah. Oh, let's see here. I think I lost this one actually. Because I mana excelled him more than I mana excelled myself. So I'm just going to concede this because I lost. <laughs> because I was um I got too greedy with acceleration. So let's see what other decks do we have that I haven't played in a while. We have Zombies, as Albert Wesker would say. We have Realms of Illusion. We have Grave Whispers. Oh, uh, let's try Grave Whispers, shall we? Blue Black Master Race. Uh, Blue Black Master Race. Based on money. Oh, I love thee. Yeah, blue is always kind of the most broken uh, thing in the game. Everyone hated blue. Because blue can, has counters, and anytime there's counters, it means you can't actually play the game. Let's see here. I'm tired of all 
Oscar F Feinstein says, I'm getting tired of all these space movies coming out. Blah, blah, we're going to Mars, blah, blah, blah. They're the zombie movies of the 2010s. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I mean, how many movies do we need where he just goes, where the person just goes to Mars in, in the same way each and every time? It is getting a bit ridiculous. I don't know. I really never liked zombies. It just was never really my thing. And I kind of got irritated by just how much they were taking everything over. Like you had The Walking Dead, which I, I've i tried watching The Walking Dead. I just never really cared for it, to be perfectly honest. But aside from The Walking Dead, yeah, there's just a bunch of other zombie stuff. My kind of issue with zombies is I don't like how it's a virus. I actually preferred when like zombies were had like no cause or it was like a supernatural cause. I just thought that was better, but, um, yeah. I don't know, I think there was a lot of movies coming out this year that was going to be interesting. There was Ghost in the Shell, which I don't expect to be good, but it should be interesting at least. Uh, there was a whole bunch of others, too. So this is a, um, what I'm playing now is a classic mono black control deck. Mono black control works a bit different from other types of control. Because basically in, in Mono Black Control, your goal is to just make your opponent discard everything in their hand. Uh, prevent them from playing stuff that way. And also to just shoot any creatures that came out. My deck, uh, when I had it, used like extra... Oh no, I still have my deck. Extra Planner Lens, Magus of the Coffers, and a bunch of other stuff. So I basically would just... Um, get up to 20 mana really quick and then just um one shot them let's see here and i'm gonna play doom blade and i'm gonna shoot that i really like the artwork on a lot of magic cards that was kind of one of the game things i really liked about the game was the flavor text and the artwork like that's beautiful the void is without substance but cuts like steel confirm dune mate remake hype yeah, the the original Dune movie is kind of like, it's kind of the best of times, it's the worst of times. I think they did a lot of things good with it. I think they did a lot of things bad with it. And maybe that's kind of a, um, a cop-out. But I think David Lynch largely did the best job that he could, given a very difficult source material. Yeah, so. I don't know. I, I think... David Lynch is a pretty good director. He's just, he's a strange, strange, strange man, I think is the best way to put him. Let's see here. So what did he discard? Cyclops Gladiator. Uh, oh, Bloodflyer Colossus. So I have a Beacon of Unrest. So I'm going to play that on Koth, and I'm going to reanimate the Bloodflyer Colossus that I previously made him discard. I love black decks. Why aren't you getting ready for the Dindu Normie Fag Bowl? Um, well, my family's going to have wings. I just, um, I was working on the weekend and I just figured I'd take a break and just come on and say hi to everybody. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't, I've never watched the Super Bowl. I've never been into football. I, I, people always ask me because I'm Canadian if I like hockey. I've never really watched hockey. Uh, let's see here. Each other player sacrifices as a creature. You get a zombie token for each one creature sacrificed this way. That's pretty cool. Excuse me. I heard that the Pope was going to talk. It should be interesting. Oh, it's good, actually, that I'm streaming. So I, I've watched four episodes of The Young Pope so far. A lot of people were asking for my opinion on that. Um, so far, I have to say, I, I really like the show. It's just really, really weird. I think it's a good way to put The Young Pope. If you haven't seen it, he's always, like, having these visions and just really weird stuff is always happening. And it's very hard to tell a lot of the time what's real and what's fake. Like, what parts of it are, are like, going on in his head and what parts of it are 
him having a, a vision or what parts of it are just other stuff. So I think that's kind of like the thing with the young Pope. I don't really think that's necessarily to the show's detriment, but it, it kind of makes it hard for me at least to really follow. But um, no, he's definitely based. I mean, he took the name Pius the Thirteenth. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Pius XII is generally regarded as being the most conservative modern pope. And he... Yeah, Pius XII. Um, a lot of people attack him over the whole Holocaust thing because they claim that he was responsible for that. And that he collaborated with Hitler and he didn't do enough during the Holocaust. Which, I mean, everything's another show up. Truth be told, he really kind of did probably as much as he could without getting killed by the Nazis. But, I mean, it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if if he did do everything he could to help the Jews, then a lot of people in these spheres would hate him. But if he didn't do enough, then the, um, the normies would hate him. It kind of shows that um, there's a general lack of gratitude in that community. Because all the people who helped them during World War II, they later slandered. Like, they slander Pius Twelfth, and he saved a bunch of them. Uh, they slander King Carol of Romania, and he saved a bunch of Jews. Um, they Who else is it that they've slandered? They slandered Franco, and he actually let a bunch of Jews escape through Spain. So I guess the moral of the story is no good deed goes unpunished, and you shouldn't help a certain group of people because they're going to smear you no matter what they do. Also, Sweden, and I think, yeah, Sweden was neutral during World War II, and a bunch of Jews went there. And look how they paid Sweden back for that. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a, that's not a bad deck to play. I'm going to try playing against uh, Garrett Wilde's Speaker, and we're going to try a different deck. I've got a whole bunch of good ones. Uh, let's try out Realm of Illusion. I think that is a mill deck. But yeah, Franco was a great man. Franco was a great man. I think the thing I like about Franco is he was more kind of a conservative. Uh, he wasn't particularly radical. He was kind of just continuing in a long tradition of kind of Spanish authoritarian conservatism. He didn't really have a lot of the crazy stuff that you saw under some of the other regimes. Like, you didn't kind of have the weird neo-paganism. You didn't have, like, the bizarre Hyperborea as a real place thing. It was just kind of a pretty basic um, right-wing country. Oscar Feinstein, 99% of Danish Jews escaped to Sweden and like one day on fishing boats aided by the Danish resistance. Yeah, and look how, um, look how they treated Sweden for that. And I'm not even like super anti-Shlomo, but I mean, fair is fair. And... Helping them out didn't really seem to do much good. Actually, on the topic of World War II, I was talking to some people, and they were saying the biggest single mistake the Germans made was not enlisting minorities in the Soviet Union. Because there was a lot of minorities who really hated the Russians, and in particular hated the commies. And if they were given the opportunity, would have gladly jumped on the bandwagon. In particular, the Ukrainians. Heinz Guderian would later say, remarking about uh, the invasion of Russia, we lost the war the day we didn't raise the Ukrainian flag over the cathedral in Kiev. Meaning that if we had have declared an independent Ukrainian state, set up a collaborative government, then the Ukrainian people, who were pretty pissed off over the whole Holodomor thing, probably would have sided with us. And, um, yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense, but that was kind of one of the issues. The Nazis were kind of hampered by their own ideology, and it made them kind of reject, in many cases, likely allies, a lot of kind of the Russian minorities, because they saw them as subhuman. Just in general, I think it also led them to have unrealistic views of what they could accomplish in the war um especially like later on when it became pretty obvious that they'd lost i remember when i was reading a biography of stalin it said that the soviet union had offered the 
the Germans three different peace treaties. Uh, the first one was they offered the same borders as uh, Brest Lvovstok or whatever it was, the same borders that the Russian Empire had offered in World War One. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, the, the one that they had offered in World War One. The second peace offering they offered was uh, just a white peace. The pre nineteen forty one borders where Germany would keep half of Poland, and the third peace treaty was the what was it called again? Um, was the the pre nineteen uh, ninety four borders where German Poland would become part of the Soviet Union. And the the Soviets offered these, and I think it was by and large pretty good peace offers, but Hitler was determined that they were just going to win. And so they just wouldn't come to a negotiated peace. Whether or not the Allies would have accepted a negotiated peace is an interesting question, but I guess we'll never really know. So in honor of I don't know, talking about the Nazis, we're going to play as the Vampire deck. Vampires came out in Innistrad. Uh, Innistrad was an interesting set. Innistrad was the gothic horror themed set. Uh, it was actually, I, I confess, I went out and I bought a, a box because of it. Yeah. So Saber is saying the Germans are now cucked, so that's karma. I mean, I, I think the thing you have to... The problem with, with Nazi Germany is it's, as with many things in life, it's kind of a mixed bag. There's there's some a lot of good things Hitler did. There's a lot of horrible things he did. I, I don't think it's it's necessarily just um, one thing or the other. I, I think it's more complicated than that. I think you can say that he had a lot of good social and economic policies, but he also had a lot of very bad political ideas and they did a lot of bad things on the international stage and i don't think you can i don't think it's really an issue to just say both of these are are true but um that's just me and that's kind of one of the issues sometimes when plebs get involved in in politics they aren't necessarily really they they can't always understand the intricacies of things i'm not trying to be like some sort of moral relativist because there is definitely good and evil in the world but when we're talking about, whatchamacallit, uh, when, when you're talking about any particular political regime or leader, there's going to be kind of a mixture of, of good and bad elements. And I, I think that's kind of a problem we sometimes have in these spheres, where a lot of people just aren't that bright or aren't that historically literate. And so they just have the urge to like yell, Hitler did nothing wrong or whatever. I personally, like, I made a video about it a long time ago, and I just said it's something I don't really think we should talk about. My um, my actual opinion on the Holocaust is I, I think it did happen. I, um, I do think there was a genocide. I, I think it's probably been exaggerated significantly just how much, um, how much actually did happen. The, the the I would think the body count is probably vastly um, vastly inflated but no I do think there was a genocide of uh, Jews and other minorities M my approach to it isn't denial because I think there's too much evidence that it happened to a certain extent my my strategy is to bring up other genocides because the real issue with the Holocaust isn't even so much the Holocaust. It's the idea that it's unique, that it was pretty much the only genocide in history, uh, that there was, in essence, no other genocide that has ever happened, when there's plenty that have happened that are b as bad or worse. I'd say the Armenian genocide was worse. Um, I would say most of the stuff the Turks did was worse, just in terms of the overall population they killed. Um, yeah, I'd say someone, um, Saber points out the Hall of Demore. Yeah, the Hall of Demore, I think, was worse, too. So I'm not saying, like, it didn't happen. I'm just saying what I think you have to do is you have to attack the narrative that it was the only genocide in history. Also, the idea that, that white people are the only people who have uh, committed any genocides in history. I mean, because there's a lot of other ones. Like, when um, India became separated 
almost immediately uh what was it again um bangladesh and pakistan uh pakistan began uh massacring the people of east pakistan aka bangladesh and um yeah and that had nothing to do with white people the west pakistanis just thought the east pakistanis were subhuman scum and that was just kind of the result of it um and and these things happen all the time and it, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with white people. I mean, if we look at the Aztecs, the Aztecs had a system in which they left, what was it, it what was it called again? Um, the Flower or the Garland Wars, where they would deliberately not annex some of the surrounding kingdoms and they would leave them. So they were basically would use them like gardens. So some of the surrounding kingdoms that would be independent They'd, they'd leave them for about 20 years or so so that they could grow up in strength. And then once the population had reached a certain point, they'd go in, fight a war, uh, kidnap most of the male population and sacrifice them. Then they'd go away for another decade or so and then come back again later. And that was more or less how the Garland Wars worked. Uh, the Aztecs just kept harvesting sacrifices from these various peoples every decade or so I, I think people have to keep in mind the aztecs were probably they could be the most evil people other than the ottoman turks who ever lived uh oscar feinstein says i think a more accurate estimate would be uh two million but over four hundred thousand. the holocaust was awful and i sympathize with the innocent killed but we can't let it hamper us no more white guilt yeah that seems pretty reasonable to me like i said i don't actually know I'm agnostic about the actual number of people who died. Um, it could be a couple million. Um, my issue is more so I don't know if you can really have an accurate accounting just because the whole issue is so politicized and just so... Um, yeah, the whole issue is just extremely politicized. I don't know if you can really have an objective view of the whole thing. But yeah, the guilt is really, I think, the bigger problem than anything else. The Hollow Demore. I think people also forget just how brutal the Japanese were. The Japanese were utter the Japanese, I don't I think people forget just how like horrifically brutal the Japanese are in World War II. If, if people think the Germans were bad, and, and the Germans could be pretty vile, but the, um, the, uh, yeah, the Japanese were just complete animals when they went to war, but, yeah, people, I think, forget what uh, East Asians can be like. East Asians can be a very cruel and um, merciless people when they go to war. Asians, I just don't think, have the same sense of morality that Westerners do. Um, they just they they just tend to view humans as ants, and I mean that's part of the whole joke of China economy strong, is that china is just kind of a human factory uh they don't really view they don't put any value on individual life all that matters is the greater good of china uh nothing else matters nothing else can matter it's just about making china economy strong and to do it happily and so the chinese people will happily go to their graves they'll happily get um basically killed by their own government and so long as it makes china stronger uh, they're perfectly happy uh, to, to make whatever sacrifice is necessary for the greater good of China economy. Okay, there we go. And I'm killing him. So this is the vampire deck. So vampires are kind of broken. They were really good back when they released them with Innistrad. Yeah, that was kind of when the power creep started going up. Generally speaking, the most broken set is considered to be Mirrodin or Darksteel. And then after those two, we also had um, Lorowin, which was really broken. 
And I'm trying to think where are some kind of the other broken ones. Uh, some other ones. The Orient is like a beehive, while the West is more like a bunch of bonobos. Yeah, that's true. Well, the Orient is a beehive. I mean, that's literally how Japan functions. The fact that people working themselves to death is so common in Japan really should say something. But the way I kind of view it is... Oh, fuck, I'm dead. <laughs> and he managed to beat me at the last second. Well played, Koth, well played. Using my own creature against me. God, I hate fighting red decks. Well played, though. Well played. Yeah, that's China economy for you. I remember back when Mirrodin first came out. I don't think there's any Mirrodin decks um, in this, but basically what Mirrodin was is you had this thing called is this freeze or something. What the fuck? Okay. That's annoying. I guess I'll have to just close this and restart it. You had this thing come out called Affinity for Artifacts. And basically it was what whenever creatures' mana cost decreased by the number of artifacts you had in play. Now the problem with that was you had artifact lands. And lands were free to play. So if you had a deck of all artifact lands and all artifacts, you could just start playing creatures at a near instantaneous rate. And that was kind of the issue that undermined uh, the entire saga, so to speak. So let's try placing Tezzeret, and I'm going to use that. Oh, is the sound playing? Oh, okay. Let me just see if I can turn that down. I, I apologize. Um, desktop audio, I'll reduce this by like 80%. Sorry, it's it's hard because I, um, I can't hear it myself. Okay, so let's play Ancient Depths again. So yeah, if this is working out, then at some point maybe I'll try doing some uh, other streams like this. Maybe I'll try doing some... I don't know. Maybe I'll start doing this for Ask Arjun. Just because it's kind of cool. It gives me some experience using OBS. It seems like a really good recording software and it's free. I've been using Bandicam before and Bandicam was kind of shit. If you see why some of my videos were laggy, it's just because Bandicam is is really a resource hog. So Coiling Oracle is ridiculously good. When Coiling Oracle enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. So yeah, that's really good for two mana. Blue-green is such a strange combination. <laughs> Which reminds me, I've been meaning to do a character profile of Urza Planeswalker. And I will do that at some point. That's a guarantee. And maybe I'll just talk about the magic storyline. That was actually one of the first things I did back really early on my channel, was I had a complete rundown of the entire Magic the Gathering storyline. But that was back when I was recording on my cell phone, like my old S3, with like shitty, without a speaker. So I, I've gotten rid of that a long time ago, because it was awful. I literally went through every Magic the Gathering book, though, and gave, like, a plot summary of all of them. So I don't know if I'd do that again, but I definitely will go back and revisit it at some point. It's a series I don't think people realize just how much lore there is in that uh, franchise. Let's see here. Cultivate. And I pretty much win next turn. Thoughts on Noe, uh, the Dark Souls successor? I have not looked at this. I think I heard someone talk about it, but let me see. Maybe sometime I will stream Dark Souls and we can watch me fail horribly. I'm not, I'm not absolutely, like, horrible at Dark Souls. I mean, I have beaten all three of them on um, New Game Plus. I did beat Nameless King. Uh, I did solo Nameless King, so I guess I should get some credit for that. 
But um, yeah, it's a game series I really like. It frustrates me because the fanboys are really, really annoying. Um, and I'm kind of a fanboy, but a lot of them are just kind of the, the stop having fun types. Like if you point out something that's legitimately wrong with the games, like bad hit detection, um, performance issues. Uh, let me think, what are some other stuff? Hit detection, performance issues. In the first game, you had a lot of issues with um, hitbox is just not working. Uh, the frame rate problems in Blight Town. Um, poise being broken in the third game. There was just a lot of issues that I, I think were legitimate complaints. Just sometimes there are things that there's no way you could figure out the first time. Also, some things aren't that self-explanatory. Like, going in the first game to get the uh, Covenant of Artorias, and then after you get the Covenant of Artorias to know that you have to go to the Abyss and fight the Four Kings, I don't think that's very self-explanatory, to be particularly honest. And that was kind of one of my issues. Let's see here. I like card games, but right now I'm a lot more into tabletop RPGs. I'm trying to get my friends into D&D. Yeah, I had a D&D &D game that, that we did over TeamSpeak. However, the problem with it is the problem with every D&D &D game, which no one would ever show up. And I was busy with work, and it's hard to get it on a regular schedule. So when, when my work schedule kind of gets a little more certain, I'd like to start another D&D &D game on... Um, uh, somewhere but yeah what the DD game was based on actually was i did a dark souls DD game so i went and i had like stats so yeah i made like the capra demon the taurus demon was like a minotaur i had solaire who was like a level 12 knight i had siren who kieran who was like a level uh like 18 rogue so i i had like stats for all the characters i had like stats for all the npcs um, we actually had to stop the game because one of the guys was lawful evil, but he played it as a chaotic evil character and just was attacking everybody. And that's always kind of an issue when you're when you're playing these games because if people don't role play properly, it's bad. But um, my friend Torellian role played as uh, Big Hat Logan, and his character was just basically autistic. For those of you who don't know who Big Hat Logan is, he is regarded as like the greatest sorcerer of all time. And he would wander from land to land. And he's called Big Hat Logan because he wears this massive hat. Um, this massive like wizard hat. And he wore it so uh, that people wouldn't be able to interact with him. Because he hated talking to people. So he wore this massive hat so people couldn't look him in the face. So he was he was pretty autistic. So his thing was whenever he did something, he tipped his big hat. But yeah, um, D and D games just kind of depend. I mean, you have to have a good DM. You have to have a a good team. If you have people who like role play, it's a lot of fun. If you get like uh, running jokes and that sort of thing, the game can be really good. But that can be difficult. Often they just break down into constant shit posting, And I mean, like, some jokes are good, but if it's just going to be all day, every day, just people, um, just, just spamming, like, memes and stuff, it just, it's not really fun anymore. I love the flavor text in this game. Idealism fits him better than his armor. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Kins, Kinsbill Cavalier. Yeah, the Kithkin were kind of one of the interesting original creatures they came up with. They're kind of like hobbits and gnomes mixed together. Peladin and Vec. There's a, um, I trying to remember what the card was called. It was, it was like Greed or something. It was like Endless Greed or something from Odyssey or uh, Onslaught. One of the whatever that continent was and it's it, it it goes an eastern paladin once an advisor once asked an eastern paladin how much gold would be enough 
and the Eastern Ballad in Slot killed his advisor and said, I have no use for fools who think in concepts such as enough. Oscar is saying, I played, play with my best friends. We're all pretty new. I've only ever DM'd, never played. But we've gotten all the in-jokes down because we've known each other for decades. Yeah, I mean, D&D is really fun. Uh, I think people underestimate just how much fun it is when you get into role-playing. I mean, people have this idea it's often like rust, it's like fighting kobolds with rusty daggers. But if you can kind of get into it, you can do some really neat stuff. Let's see here. Lionheart Maverick. First strike, protection from black and red. Wow, that's perfect since my opponent's using black and red. But yeah, I've had like crazy stuff happen in D&D. Like monks are broken in 3.5. And in one game we were fighting a Kraken and the monk got swallowed by the Kraken. And when he was inside the Kraken, he used an item called Dust of Dryness. And Dust of Dryness will absorb like a lake size of water. So when he used it inside the Kraken, it completely dried the Kraken out. And the Kraken just died. Also, if you're like a really strong character, you can actually tear your way outside of the, the stomach of, an, of a creature. The funny thing was we were playing on a board and when the Kraken got played, uh, the guy who was DMing just slammed his backpack down on the table. And that was pretty funny. Let's see here. Great sword. The only blow that matters is the killing blow. Indeed. Oh, okay. I don't have enough to play Smite the Monstrous. Oh, let's see. I'll play two more knights. And because I have a knight exemplar in play, all knights I control are indestructible. <laughs> Yeah, I actually have an Acroma Angel of Wrath IRL, and I have an Acroma Memorial. It was funny because I was actually looking to sell some of my cards off, and I had bought a bunch of Zendikar gap, uh, Zendikar um, cards back in the day, so I had a couple dual lands. So I was able to sell uh, a couple of my dual lands for like a hundred bucks a piece, and yeah, make a bunch of money off of that. So. That that um that paid for some of the money I spent on it after the year over the years. If you ever get a chance, I think the best format of Magic to play is sealed. Or, or sorry, is draft. If you've never played draft before, uh, basically how draft works is everybody purchases three packs of cards, and everybody takes a card and then passes along the um the pack. So you, you open it, you take a card from the pack, and then you pass it to the next person. And you do that until the first pack's gone, and then you do that with the next pack, etc., etc., until you have all the cards. And then you have to make a deck from the cards you've gotten. And then at the end of the game, you get to keep all the cards that you got. And I mean, that's a lot of fun, because you get to play a fun game, but you also uh, and it's fair. Because everybody gets to just use the same uh, set of cards. Like, you can't buy your way into a better deck. Everybody just is doing it completely from scratch. Which makes it really fair. You also get to keep all the cards at the end. So you, if you have, like, six people, you get to take cards out of, like, 24 packs or whatever. So it's, it's, uh, it's fun. It's uh, more cost-effective than a lot of stuff. I never went to tournaments because I'm not really competitive, to be perfectly honest. I prefer playing against AIs. But, uh, yeah. Let's see here. Hank Hill asks, do I use propane or charcoal? Uh, propane. I don't know if anyone in Canada really uses charcoal, to be honest. I think that's more of like a southern thing. Anyways, I'm just going to finish this and maybe I'll go because i think we're having wings soon i just figured i'd come on and see if obs works it looks like the performance is really good i'm, I'm actually really impressed by it 
I would kill for a traditionalism and dragons featuring a rotating cast from the reactive sphere. Babs and Adam would be top monks. That would be fun. Uh, I've kind of it's kind of something I've wanted to do at some point is have a a D and D game on um on uh YouTube just uh like as something kind of for the audience. I'll, I'll think about that. I might do it at some point. We'd probably try maybe fifth edition because I love three point five edition. Just because 3.5 edition is completely unbalanced and is just completely broken in every way, shape, or form. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's still a lot of fun. That's kind of why I like it. 5th uh, edition is just really hard. Uh, sorry, 3.5 is just really hard to learn, to be perfectly honest. Which is the reason why more people don't play it. And I can understand that. 4th edition I've looked at and I really didn't like 4th edition. It's like excessively complicated. Uh, Pathfinder's not bad. It's just too balanced for me. I kind of like when the game's more broken. Like when people can do crazy shit. Like have monks run at Mach 10. Or just just, just crazy things. Um, is kind of my personal preference when it comes to RPGs. Okay, so Oscar Feinstein says 3.5 is a lot of fun. Pathfinder is like 3.5, but with severe autism. I play 5th edition myself, but 4th edition is like an MMO. Yeah, that was kind of the impression I got just when I was looking at it. 4th um, edition I just looked at and it just made me want to vomit. It just had an extremely complicated layout. 5th uh, edition looks like it's a pretty good compromise. So I definitely like to play it sometime. My only experience playing 5th edition was really negative just because I had a DM who never uh, would let us rest. So I was playing as a druid. So he would have to go through like five or six encounters without being allowed to rest. Um, and if you're like a druid or something, that's just very difficult to manage, to be perfectly honest. Because uh, you need your wild shapes. If you don't have your wild shapes, you're screwed. Just like if you don't have your spells as a wizard, you're completely screwed. But he would never let us use any of that, so it was just kind of a disaster of a campaign. Fuck overrun. Oh, Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> have you played Daggerfall or the original Fallout games? No, I haven't. I, um... I just don't really like stuff that old, to be perfectly honest. It's just not really my cup of tea. I fudge rolls and take it easy on my players. So they don't get pissy. Yeah, I rig the game a lot. Uh, largely so people don't die. Now I'm just going to show you a a interesting uh, format of game that they put in, which they took out of the later ones, which is kind of too bad because I really enjoyed the later ones, which is uh, Arch Enemy. So in Arch Enemy, you face off against three people at once. However, you get random cards that go, that uh, help you out. So here, I'll show you it. It's, it's really fun to play. So let's see here. So each turn I get to play an arch enemy card. So the first arch enemy card is uh, gain control of all non-land permanents until end of turn. Unfortunately, that's really not useful in this situation, but it'll be fine. So I also get 40 health, but I have to face off against three people. But as you'll see, that's fine. I chose a deck that's especially good for arch enemy. Just because it's a mana ramp deck. So yeah, some of the arch enemy cards will be like, put three lands into play, get a bunch of health, that kind of thing. The core are kind of interesting. We don't, I don't know too much about them, but yeah. Wall of Vines. Walls are always fun.
your fate is thrice sealed. Reveal the top three cards of your library. Um, put all land cards revealed this way into the battlefield and the rest into your hand. Yep, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh, so that's one land, so that's good. It'll play Explore, which lets me draw another card. Hopefully it'll be an island, and I can play an island, and then I can play Coiling Oracle and draw again. Oh, and I, grow, I drew Donald Trump the card. Koz, Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. You'll see what Kozilek does when I get to play him. Do, 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 do. Come on. And these guys haven't really done anything yet. They all, I think, take their turns at the same time. I forget if they had... Yeah, I think they put Emperor in one of these. They introduced a couple extra formats. They had... Um, they had Elder Dragon Highlander, which was a very popular format. When you set this scheme in motion, put five sap propelling tokens into play. So that's good. That gives me a wall. Let's see. Search library for two forests. Uh, should I take Tidings or Scry Shout? Claim. I think I'll take Sky Shroud Claim. Oh, that puts them into play untapped? Cool. So then I can play Undo Giant. And that gives me another land. So next turn I can start playing some of my ridiculous shit. Ah, do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Mm hmm, hmm. Yeah, I should watch some more Young Pope. I really, uh, really love the show. To be perfectly honest, it's it's a lot of fun. It's just really, really strange the way it's shot and the way it's paced and stuff. But well, I'm sure it'll get better. Hopefully, it's renewed for another season. I'm not sure if they have announced another season of it yet or what's going on with that. But it'll be interesting to see. And they're just throwing out useless creatures that aren't really helpful to them. And let's see, what scheme do I get this turn? Check out The Crown if you haven't. Uh, yes, I have wa watched The Crown. The Crown is excellent. If anyone here hasn't seen The Crown, go see The Crown. Uh, it's, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, let's see here. I don't have quite enough to play one of those yet. I can play Inkwell Leviathan. I think I'll play him next turn. I want to see if I can get enough for one of the Eldrazi. Let's see, I'll play that. I'll play Cultivate, which gives me another two lands. Okay. Just have to survive one more turn, and then I will begin destroying them. Ulmog, the Infinite Gyre. So that'll be Pence, and that'll be Donald Trump. Needs to play Democracy 3 or Superpower. Uh, maybe I'll play Democracy 3 on one of these streams. I had actually had a game where I played it as Canada. I had to use cheats, though, because we actually played the game. It's just... I don't know. I find it unplayable just because of political capital and uh, having coups every other day. So I, I played it with cheats, but uh, no, it was, a, it was a fun little game. Democracy 3. And then there was, uh, yeah, I tried this out and I tried it as France, I think. As Canada and France. France was fairly easy. I played as like a nationalist party and things actually worked out pretty well in the end. Uh, reveal top three cards. Let's see. Oh. Oh, that. Literally the meanest card in the game. Okay, let's see here. Oh, it's a legendary. Okay. I'll play Inkwell Leviathan. And I'll play a... Explosive Vegetation. I love the artwork on Inkwell Leviathan. Look at that thing. 
But yeah, next turn I'm gonna play. Uh, let's see. Discard a card from your hand. I'll discard. I don't need that extra land. Next turn I'm gonna play Rite of Re Replication, where if I pay the kicker cost, I can create five copies of target creature. So I'm gonna make five copies of Inkwell Leviathan, and that'll be fun. <laughs> oh, it's so mean. The Inkwell Leviathan reminds me of Morrowind. Yeah, the Eldrazi were kind of their attempt to do a Cthulhu S set. They were these ancient creatures that people were trying to awaken. And the Planeswalkers themselves couldn't fight the Eldrazi because the Eldrazi was too strong. What do you think of Crusader Kings 2 and games like it? I love Crusader Kings 2 and all the other ones. I want a Victoria Democracy 2 hybrid. Yeah, that sounds like that would be awesome. I'd love that. Uh, choose a creature you don't control. Okay, I will hit him. Okay, so I have to win next turn. Let's see, what happens when he comes into play? Okay, I'm going to play that so I get... Oh, he has Shroud. Oh, well, that sucks. I can't target him because he's immune from being targeted. So I'm going to play Butcher of Truth. And then I'm going to play Mind Control. So I gain control of that. And then I'll also play Explore. So the new Dark Souls game is going to be, or the new Dark Souls spinoff is going to be on, um, what is it called again? PS4. That's kind of disappointing. I don't have a PS4. I think the next console I'll get will probably be a Switch. Just because I have a long commute. And the Switch will be fun to play on the commute. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I might just wait another week or two to get the Switch. Uh, I mean a couple months to get it just to make sure it like works. And that's all the um, the other stuff. Yeah. Let's see here. It appears that my um, my review of Split went live without me wanting it to go live. So I'm just gonna flip that back to private. The Ring D uh, City DLC looks cool. Oh, shit. Hmm. I'll sacrifice that and that. Uh, let's see. Does he have Trample? No, he doesn't. Okay. So I'll chump block him. And I can't block him because he has flying. So I'll just chump block Butcher of Truth. Your puny mind cannot fathom. Draw four cards. Let's see here. Someone's asking what the specs of my PC are. Um, so I have a um, an i7. A, I have an i7, 4 gigs of RAM. Um, I think it's a, let me just look here. I think it's a 680 GTX. Let me just fire up DX Diag. And I can double check what my specs are. Okay, so I have an i7, a... GTX 960. That's what I have a GTX 960 and of course 16 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte hard drive. Um, 
call me a pleb, but I actually got a, uh, whatchamacallit, a pre-built computer. Um, this one was a Dell, actually, a Dell XPS. I actually like, uh, I kind of like building, um, buying pre-made PCs. I don't really see why people hate them as much as they do. I don't think it's really, I don't really see what's so bad about them. They work perfectly fine in my book. They can often actually be cheaper, I find, than building it custom. That's what happens whenever I, like, need a new PC. That's what happens whenever I, I look at um, building one myself, and then I look at building a cust buying one, and normally it's it's about the same, or it's often I find cheaper to just buy one. Take an extra turn after this one. Well, that's going to be fun. Is your house burning? No, it, it isn't burning. Just, um... I think the wings have been on a little too long. That's probably my best guess. Let's see, living destiny. Oops. And I will reveal him to gain some more life. And I'll take that. And I think I will just go to attack phase. And I get an extra turn after this one, so there's no reason to not attack with everybody. So, Koth is dead. And, wow, he took negative 22 <laughs> health. Let's see it. I'll play a Rite of Replication. Oh, I don't have the mana for it. That's okay. I'll play Primeval Titan next. <laughs> so now I have all the mana in my deck, and I'll discard because I have too many cards in my hand. Yeah, that reminds me, I have to do a reactionary review at some point of uh, Tsukihime and Fate Stay Night. I uh, I really enjoy all the type moon games. Um, there's a guy on YouTube called Captain Chaos, and he does the... Uh, he That's mainly his thing, is he does all the type moon games. And he uh, like does playthroughs of them. And I do really enjoy his quality content. And I say that unironically. Uh, he does a lot of good stuff. Yeah, he, like, reads all the Tsukihime games, and he reads all of the, uh, like, Fate Stay Night games and all the extras on it. But if you've never played, had the pleasure of playing Tsukihime or all that stuff, uh, they're all great. I liked all that stuff back in the day. Uh, I still like that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's fun. That's what it is. So now if I can just get through the next turn without decking myself, I will win. Uh, you may pay X if you do draw X cards and gain X life. I'm not going to pay anything, because if I do, I'm going to die. <laughs> so let's see. He's going to go to like negative 40 with this. This is going to be funny. No, I don't want to use that. There we go. I defeated the opposing team. So I think that's good for now. Um, we'll have more fun stuff going forward as I kind of figure out some stuff to come up with. So I hope people like the stream and uh, have a good weekend, rest of the weekend, everybody.